In this video, you're going to talk about a bunch of things that have the potential to ruin your drumming if you do not pay attention to them. Intro. Hello players, welcome. This is your boy Jstakes coming at you with another video. So before we move along, hit the subscribe. Let's try and get to 160 likes. So you already know the premise of this video, right? So no need for talking, no need for chit chats, jibba jabba. Let's get on with the video, shall we? Number one, playing without authority. This doesn't mean not asking for permission before playing drums, obviously. Come on, son. What this means is not making your presence known as a drummer. So when you sit behind the drums, you are mostly the center of the beat. Some people say it's between the bass guitarist and the drummer. As a drummer, you should make your presence felt. And this doesn't mean you should be loud or noisy or playing fills all over the place. Just so people recognize that, hey, there's a drummer in the house. Ha! <laughs> there's a drummer in the house. No, that's not it. What this means is there should be no hesitation. When you're playing and you hesitate, people feel it. Let's say you go in to play a fill like this. Whilst you're in the middle of the fill, you're thinking about what to play next and it shows because the fill doesn't come out smoothly. It doesn't just over the drums. Even if you are, you are now learning, you don't want it to be said that, ah, he's now learning, just, he's just a learner drummer, you know? You don't want that. What you want is that, oh, I like the way he plays. He plays the groove solidly, you know, he holds it down. There are some instances where you haven't got authority over the drums. It's very helpful and very beneficial. So a couple of times in church, when I was growing up, you might have the occasional song leader that is not really on the beat. He or she is moving in and out, not sticking to a particular tempo. As the drummer, because you are now coming up, you just want to play. So you try to follow them wherever they go. And it comes out sounding like, drummer is not really, it's not very good. Has some things to work out. But that's not the case. It is you trying to make the best of a bad situation. But as a drummer, in that kind of situation, what you should be doing is sticking to your tempo and let everyone follow you. Because the more convinced you are that you are on time, that you are on the tempo, the easier it is for people to hold on to you and keep going. Because you are mainly the beat of the song or the track or whatever it is. And people want to hold on to you, but you need to show that, okay, you are worthy of being held on to. Number two, timekeeping. Timekeeping is a very important thing because, you know, we are timekeepers. As a drummer, it doesn't mean we own a lot of clocks. Or watches, it means we hold the tempo, we hold the time. Sometimes it's not the song leader that's going in and out of tempo. Sometimes it's the drama. You play one fill and it speeds up by two. Play another fill, it speeds up by 2.5. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. It has to be on time, holding it. And the best way to do that actually as a drama is to just play with a metronome, practice with a metronome. Practice with a click trap. The more you do that, the more you build some kind of internal clock. They call this the internal clock, where like, you know where the time is, just because you know where the time is, you don't have to have a reference to know where the time is. So when the song leader is in and out of tempo, you don't care, you're still on the tempo because you have the internal clock going. You build your internal time before you come to play on the gig because you don't have a reference point and you need to be able to stick on time. No one is going to cut you some slack for not sticking on time because you should have it as a drama. You should be born with it. But guess what? We are not born with it. We learn it, we develop it along the way as we go. Number three, posture and seating. In a previous video, linked here, we talked about posture and seating. Okay, we just talked about seating, where you have to sit three quarters of the way forward on the seat in order to have the best balance seated behind the drums. So the thing is getting comfortable because the more comfortable you are, the more you're able to execute on the things that you're doing. And the less comfortable you are, let's say you're playing the drums and your leg keeps hitting the snare. You're trying to do some things, but your leg keeps hitting the snare. 
you would have a bad day behind the drums because there's something throwing you off from giving your best performance. That's how it is. When you're not seated behind the drums, ideally, in a way that you feel comfortable, it translates into your playing. And that can be what makes or breaks your playing on the day of performance. So my advice would be come early, get comfortable with the drums. If it's your own drums, set it up. If it is drums provided, be comfortable with how it is set up. Then at the time you need to execute, you would be comfortable with the setup and you would be able to play to the best of your ability. Number four, overplaying or underplaying. It is really unlikely to find a drummer that is underplaying. Usually a drummer that is playing less is a little more experienced than a drummer that just started playing because we learn a whole bunch of new things and we want to try it out all over the drums. When you play the same fill over and over and over again, just because you learned it on the J-Sticks channel, shameless plug, which you should, which you should learn the fills on the J-Sticks channel, obviously. I don't know why you shouldn't, but just because you learned drum fill on the J-Sticks channel does not mean you should play it over and over and over again on the gig, because what that conveys is Oh, okay, he learned something new and he wants to show that he knows how to play it. Or she learned something new and she wants to show that she can play it. And that's not the point. The point is to be musical. So the respect must be given to the music. So there's this thing that I heard somewhere that says, if you think about it, don't play it. It should just come with your music. So let's say you're playing a groove, right? Then you're like, you know what? This drum fill that I learned would be really fire at this place. Let me just put it here at this place and it would be fire. You would notice that you would play it and it doesn't flow as well as if you were just playing and it came out on its own. It should just come out because it has become part of your vocabulary. Just like the words I'm speaking, I don't think of should I use the word reciprocate in a sentence? So the way the drums needs to be reciprocated is that it doesn't make any sense in this sentence. You get it. Just because I know the word reciprocate doesn't mean I should use it in the sentence I'm speaking right now. That's the same idea. Just because we know some drum feel that we learned that is really good doesn't mean we should put it in every situation. Kind of. Number five, dynamics. It's how high or low you're playing something with respect to drums. So if I were to play the drums like this, it would mean that I'm just at one level, probably like the highest level and just going there. And there's no way to go up from there or go down from there. If you're playing with some level of between the notes. What usually we would do is the hi-hat is a little lower, the snare is a little higher, the kick is a little bit in between. It creates some sort of merging effect. It allows the music to breathe within the notes that you're playing. So it can get to a point that you would raise the hi-hat volume it's a little louder. Using ghost notes and accent is dynamic. Playing softer notes, louder notes, all within the same form gives it some sort of breathing effect that makes the music richer than just playing everything at the same volume. A second part of dynamics is the drums as a whole having its own volume. Because if you play the whole drums loud in the scope of the whole music, so we have all the instruments and the drums is like really high and all the instruments are like this, it doesn't make for a very good listening experience. So the drums should be able to regulate itself, have its presence known, but then not overpower the music. There are points in the music where we call the hype section. The energy of the music goes up and you have to respect that energy and go up with the music. You can't be playing softly when the music is all the way up and you can't be playing loudly when the music has come all the way down. And those are the aspects of dynamics that you're probably not going to be taught in a drum lesson, but you're expected to know. Number six, quantization. 
quantization is basically precisely placing the notes where they need to fall within a bar so if you are playing 16th note they are falling on the 16th note on the one e and a two e and a they are not falling in between the notes so you have a bar right you're supposed to put four notes on the bar and this is supposed to be in the form of quarter note on the measure but you playing it as quarter notes it doesn't seem to fall exactly where it needs to fall as quarter notes it means it's not quantized so your playing seems off not in the sense that you're speeding up or slowing down but the notes in between the notes if you get me are not properly centered so it sounds kind of sloppy it doesn't sound on point it doesn't give you that authority that we talked about the audience doesn't know exactly what is going on but they feel like your playing is sloppy and that makes you sound like a bad drama before we go on to the last one let's have a word from our sponsor the drum chops builder app is an amazing application check this out you're drinking some tea in the morning having a good time looking at the sunrise the trees the birds and stuff and you have an idea Ooh, this pattern might be nice when played on the 16th note and you end it with the triplet and it's going to going towards the next and the first and the fifth then you notice you're not in a place to practice those ideas but with the drum chops build up you have your phone you can just take your phone and input your ideas with the drum in the app then later you can go practice your delicious ideas like i said it's delicious so check it out the link is in the description down below thank you for supporting the drum chops build app by purchasing a subscription or some kind of thing because it helps out the channel okay for number seven we have bad technique Technique goes a long way in affecting how you sound on the drums because it's easy to spot someone with bad technique but you don't really notice when someone has good technique. When someone has bad technique, it tends to translate into other areas like how fast they can hit the drums, even coming down to the tone of the drums, how much sound they are able to get from the drums. Good technique means you know where to hit the drum, the points to hit that gives you the best resonance on the drums how to hold the stick how to use your wrist how to use your fingers to get more speed how to use your arms your hands to get more power ways in which you can get the most out of your drums without sort of harming yourself or putting too much stress on your body and that's what technique does it shows you the proven ways that you can apply to your drumming that makes it much better such that you don't injure yourself whilst trying to play some music bad technique can have harmful effects not just on your drumming but on your health as well because if you don't hold the sticks well you can get carpal tunnel carpal tunnel has something to do with your hands it sort of damages your blood vessels and you're not able to articulate better so drum technique is very important not just to show off that you know how to play like the three molar whatever with the swingy thing 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 no one cares about that but then good technique just helps you to be able to bring the ideas that are in your head onto the drums in the easiest way possible. So I hope this helps. I hope you see areas that need improving. I know that there are some areas in here that I need improving for myself. I hope you see some areas that you need improving for yourself. And we can grow as a community, as a player nation and become stronger and better on the drums. Thank you so much for watching. If you watch all the way to the end, you, my friend, are an MVP, the most valuable player. Player. If you're new here and you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified. If you're old and you watch the videos and you're still not subscribed, come on, son. Hit the subscribe and hit the bell and turn on all notifications such that you would receive all the delicious goodness that is coming from this channel. Hit the like button. If this video inspired you, if it taught you something, if it even made you laugh, hit the like button. Let's try and get some likes in here because it helps out the channel. It makes us grow faster. It helps more people to see the videos. So hit the like button. And that's it. This is your boy J Sticks. And stick with it. Stick with it. Peace.